what's up, Scott Balkan here with Imagination Creation Films, and today we're talking about getting the very best out of the compression used on online streaming platforms like YouTube. So here you are trying to get the best picture possible out of your videos. You export it, it looks great, and then as soon as you upload it to YouTube, it looks horrible. You pull all your hair out and you run down the street yelling, YouTube! Well, I wanna help you get the best quality out of your videos on YouTube and other online video platforms. It all boils down to an old saying in television, garbage in, garbage out. Now, speaking of video platforms, now would be a great time for you to click that subscription button. Can you see what I did there? Yeah. So first, a little compression history, just so you understand where everything is coming from. And if you want to go ahead and skip to the settings, just go right here. But I encourage you to learn a little bit first. At the end, there's going to be some little known tips and tricks just to help you get the most out of YouTube. Yeah, put, put a little trap in there, yeah. Today, most streaming platforms are using one of these three codecs for streaming, AVC or H.264, HEVC or H.265, and VP9, a compression that was created by Google but has been made available royalty-free to the world. The first thing we need to understand is iframe versus P-frame versus B-frame. An iframe is a compressed frame where the algorithm only looks at that frame to derive how to compress the frame. A P-frame is a predictive frame. What that means is it compares the current frame to the previous P-frames until it gets to an I-frame. It notes the differences and only compresses those differences. That means that you're storing far less data per frame, on average, than with I-frames. A B-frame is even more advanced. It compares the previous frames as well as it looks ahead to the next frames to create an even more efficient compressed frame based only on those changes. So that makes sense, right? Well, here's where the math really starts to get crazy, and I'll give you a little taste of it, not to go too far, because quite honestly, it's pretty nerdy. It's nerdier than I am, but it's the nerdiest. Right, the first codec we'll talk about is H.264. Now, H.264 uses blocks of 16 by 16 pixels in its calculation. They're called macro blocks. It looks at the pixels in the macro block and determines the best way it can assign mathematical formula to derive that entire macro block. It does this in a number of ways, such as averaging, spatial prediction, macro block division, and motion compensation, to name a few of the many. Now, H.265 starts at a 64 by 64 pixel block, but can partition them into much smaller sections. In there, there are a number of methods to mathematically predict what that partition would look like. It works similarly to the H.264 in its math, except it has far more options with far more parameters and acceptable values to help it create the smallest compressed formula over a large number of frames. VP9 is similar to H.265, but it expands on the number of options and divisions it can make to allow its file sizes to be even smaller than HEVC. So, did your eyes really just glaze over there? Really? That, that's, that's sad. That's sad, well, all right. Okay, so let's talk about getting the most out of YouTube. YouTube works in a funny way. It recompresses your video to a codec of its choosing. No matter what you do, YouTube will recompress your video. They either use AVC or VP9. And we all know what happens when you make a copy of a copy, right? Yeah, we all seen that movie. It degrades, yeah. The, the way to get the best out of the recompression is to provide the closest to original as possible. That means giving it the cleanest video to upload. Garbage in, garbage out. Now, I'm sure some of you are saying, but Scott, my camera is recording in H.264. How can I make it better than that? Well, again, a copy of a copy matters. On top of all that, all the color information, titles, fades, VFX, anything you add into that video will likely be a higher quality. So you still have more information than you started with on just your camera. So YouTube has upload standards that they tell you what they would like to see. And honestly, they're doing this because they get millions of videos a day to compress and they'd like to store as little as possible. Now, this will not lead to a very good looking videos at all. YouTube says that they want an H.264 8 megabit for 1080p video and 35 megabits for 4K video. That is extremely compressed. Now, Adobe Premiere has some presets that are designed for higher quality, and although they are higher in quality, they're not exactly what I would call quality. H.264 16 megabits for 1080p and H.264 40 megabits for 4K. But again, this will not lead to good looking videos. We need to provide videos that look far superior in the final encoding, and that comes at a cost, file size, really big file sizes. But we're looking for the best, right? So 
Here are my recommended settings, starting with the best to worst. That being said, the worst will be better than the Adobe presets provides or the specifications of YouTube provides. So the first one is ProRes 422HQ. The second one would be ProRes 422. The third one would be ProRes LT. Now, I know what you're thinking. We didn't talk about ProRes, but we all know what ProRes. ProRes is by far a great looking codec and it's very, very small amount of compression in there really gives you a high quality master. So that's why ProRes is, is one of the very best to provide. Now the next one is WebM or VP9. Now this you need to set at constant quality. And now WebM, we might go into a video later on that describes how to do WebM, but if you Google it and you look up WebM, it is, uh, is super simple and it takes forever but it is one of the better qualities. Now, the next one is H.265. In 1080, variable bit rate at megabits. The next one after that would be H.265 4K, variable bit rate at megabits. Now, from there, we go into H.264. Now, we're gonna do H.264 1080, VBR, two pass, 100 megabits. And then, H.264 4K, variable bit rate, two pass, 200 megabits. So let's walk through these settings. All right, so opening up Premiere here, uh, we've got a project. This was the Tekina 8K lens test, and um, it is shot in 8K, and it was edited in 8K, and it was output in 8K. So we're gonna work with this one. And this was shot in red. This is R3D 8K, so it's it's huge. But even if you shot it with GH5 or a G7 or a Sony or a Panasonic, it, it, it doesn't matter. The, the output is still going to look better. The first things we're going to do is we're going to go up here and we're going to go to File. We're going to Export Media. All right, now, in here. So where we want to go first, if you remember, the very first thing I said was we want to give it ProRes. So we're going to go to Format, and we're going to choose QuickTime. Now, if you don't have QuickTime and you're on Windows, now if you're on Windows and you don't have QuickTime, you need to update to the latest version of Adobe Premiere because Apple took it away and then they licensed it back. Under QuickTime, here are your presets right here. And there's really not much to change on these presets because honestly, they're already set to the great quality. So the very first one is ProRes 422 HQ. Now you can change a few things here. Uh, the quality, I would leave it maxed at 100%. Now, if you wanna change your output resolution, this is currently going to go to 8K, but if you wanted to change it to uh, 1920 by 1080, then just make your changes here. Uh, if you check that box, it will link these two and it'll keep your, um, see, 3840. See, it'll change the, your height here as well. 1920 is standard HD. All right, we're gonna leave our frame rate at 23976. Down here, we wanna make sure always at every output, change it to render at maximum depth. And then on ProRes, we wanna change it to 16-bit here. That is really all we need to do on ProRes. Down here, we wanna check maximum render quality. Again, that's on everything as well. Make sure your se sequence is at the end to out, and then we're going to queue it and export it. The next one down would be ProRes 422. Again, we wanna do the same setting. So change your resolution if you wanna change it. We're gonna go down here, and we would change this to 16-bit, render at maximum depth, use just like that and then you would export. Then the same thing goes down to ProRes 422LT. And ProRes 422LT is a very light file size for ProRes, but it is um, quite compressed. <laughs> so it'll be a small file size, but it's quite compressed. But it's still better than all the other options. All right, so from QuickTime, we're gonna jump down to WebM. And if you don't have WebM, uh, you'd have to Google that and download it and import it into Premiere. It's kind of a pain in the rear. Uh, honestly, you're probably not ever going to use this because it is so incredibly slow. So this one is already set to 4K as their, their default preset, and their default preset is actually pretty good. Uh, the only things we're gonna wanna change here, um, we wanna change the variable bit rate to constant quality and leave it at 50%, or you can go all the way up to 100, but honestly, if you have that much time and that much processing power, you, you're cooler than all of us. 
Um, we want to change this to two-pass encoding. Anytime you have the option to a two-pass, always do a two-pass. Now our sampling, we don't want to do 420, we want to do 422. And then our bit depth, we want to go to 10. So you do not need to include the alpha channel, but these settings right here, uh, this is your color depth, so this supports a billion colors, whereas 8-bit supports 16.7 million. And then this is your sampling rate, and you definitely want that to be as high as possible. But 422 is not necessary because YouTube will never use 422, or 444, sorry. Down here again, maximum render quality, and then Q. You can see here how big this file is going to be, 556. If we boost this up to 100%, now we're at a 2 gig file. But the 50% VP9 looks fantastic. This three minute video here in 4K on VP9 will probably take upwards of a full day to export at these settings. And that is a 14 core overclocked machine with a 1080 Ti video card. So it's not for the faint of heart. All right, so the next one we're gonna use is HEVC, which is H265. Now, there are the, again, up here, if you notice, it does match bit weight. Let's just set it to 4K UHD as a start so you can kind of see what's going on. So right off the bat, we get down here, we have the render maximum depth. We definitely want to do that. And if you notice here, encoding settings, software encoding, you can't do hardware encoding on H.265 on 90 something plus percent of the machines out there. I don't know why. I think it's silly, but hey, you know, it's what we got. Now, you want to do bit rate. You only get a single pass. You can't do uh, two pass, but we want to max this out at 60. Now, 60 is not that great for a 4K video file. So if we come down here, we can boost our level to 6.2. Now it unlocked a couple of additional features, but one of them is now we can go to 3840 here. And if we come down, you're going to notice one thing that has changed. We have more bit rates. Let's do a higher bit rate. Let's set this to, oh, I don't know, maybe 200 for 4K and 100 for 2K. And then we're gonna change this to higher. Make sure we set to maximum render quality. Look at our file size. It's now four gig. But this quality is going to be pretty phenomenal compared to H.264 and definitely compared to the presets that uh, they recommend for YouTube. And then for, if you just wanna go down to 1920 by 1080, then we can go, by using this level 6.2, we can change this down to about 100, and that will make our file size, this one also should be 100. And then notice our file size went down to about two gig. Uh, but it will make a huge difference in how it outputs. Now, earlier I had said 60 and 20 for H.265, but I've corrected them on the text and just ignore what I'm saying. Now, the next one we're going to talk about is um, H.264. H.264 is right here. Don't use the Blu-ray one. And then we're going to go down here and we're going to use... Um, I, you could use the uh, YouTube 2160 for start. If we use the default YouTube 2160P, we can go down here and we can see that we have render maximum depth is not checked. Always want to check that. We want to change the um, bit rate here to a two pass VBR. And then we want to bump this up. If you're at 4K, this needs to be 200. And if you're at uh, 2K, then you can do this at 100. Now look at our file size. Make sure this maximum render quality is checked and everything else is the same. Now this is going to be a huge, huge file, but it's going to look good. Now it's not going to look as good as WebM. It's not going to look as good as H.265. And it's definitely not going to look good as, as ProRes. Now, let's say you want to go to um, 7680. Whoops. Can't do it. Why? Well, because the codec, the H.264, didn't support anything over 4K originally. So you have to come down here and you have to change your level. Now, the levels are the versions of the um, 
encoding. So they come up with a new standard, they give it a new version, and they unlock new features. Sometimes you have to be worried about this, because if you use a setting that a player doesn't have the ability to play back, well, then you, you, you're you not going to be able to play it. So in YouTube's case, it doesn't matter. They can read all of these. So now that I've unlocked it by going to level 6.2, now you can see I can get to 81.92, but in this case, we're actually going to go to 76.80 right there. Now you can see that we have all these settings back. We're at two pass. Um, now... On 8K, you're not going to do 200. You got to boost this bad boy up. Let's get it up there closer to 400. And look at our file size. It is uh, it is up there. Now, keep in mind, uh, the ProRes files can get quite large. This file in, um, in 8K ProRes 422HQ was, I believe, 95 gig for this three meg file. So always use this stuff sparingly. Hopefully that opened your eyes to the wonderful world of streaming compression and getting the most out of it. But for those that stuck around to the end, here are some interesting little tips for you that aren't well known. First, YouTube will compress your video based on the performance of your video. If your channel is popular, it will give you VP9. If it doesn't get that many views or you're not that popular, you're gonna get AVC or H.264. VP9 is better, so if you wanna make sure your videos get recompressed using VP9 instead of AVC, you need to set your output resolution to 1440p. It's a little known trick that'll force VP9, and you'll need to boost your bit rate a little bit over the 1080p, but it will look better. Garbage in, garbage out. Another tip is YouTube has a max file size of 128 gigabytes. So as long as your videos aren't over that, you'll be able to push your videos to the max. Now, obviously not everything needs to be the best quality, so use it sparingly. But for stuff that you're super proud of, push it to the max and let the world see what you've created. And if you have any questions or comments, do feel free to put those in the comments down below. I try to read and respond to them. I also have a Patreon and it really helps. So if each and every one of you would just go out there and just give a dollar, it will make a difference and I would greatly appreciate it. So let that be your weekly goal. Just go give a dollar to Sky, it's a little tip jar. And make sure you subscribe to this channel. And you know what, as I always like to leave it, don't let your passion center around your life, let your life center around your passions. Oh, 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 oh,